In today's episode, we're going to learn how to install Comfy UI, how to download the models, and by the end of this video, you're going to be able to generate your first image. First, go to comfy.org or just search Comfy UI on Google. On the home page, click the download button. You will be taken to a page where you can choose between Windows, Mac, or GitHub. For this tutorial, we are going to focus on Windows, so click on the Windows download option. Download the comfyuisetup.dhc file and double click it to start the installer. Click Get Started when it opens. Now, you're going to see three options NVIDIA. This is the recommended one if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, it sets up everything automatically. Manual configuration for advanced users who want to install Python themselves. CPU mode, this is mainly for developers or systems without a GPU, but it's really slow. For most users, select NVIDIA and click Next. Now, choose where to install Comfy UI. I recommend creating a folder called Comfy UI on your C drive or another SSD with plenty of space. Then click Next. You will be asked if you want to migrate an existing installation. Once you select a folder with a previous Comfy UI installation, it will allow you to select what do you want to migrate. If you're starting fresh, you can just skip this part by leaving it empty and clicking Next. On the final setup screen, you will see some options like usage metrics. I usually turn that off, but it's up to you. Now, before clicking Install, take a look at the mirror setting section. If you see a red edge, that means something's wrong with one of the download mirrors. Click the little plus icon to expand the settings, and you can either pick a different mirror or replace it manually. When everything looks good, hit the Install button. The installer is going to take care of everything, setting up Python, downloading dependencies, and creating the shortcuts. Once it's done, the Comfy UI interface will launch automatically. Now that Comfy UI is installed and running, let's take a look at the interface and get you generating your first image. You can zoom in and out using your mouse wheel or with Alt plus and Alt minus. You can move around by clicking and dragging the canvas with the middle mouse button or by holding the space bar and moving with the left mouse button. On the screen, you will see these little rectangular boxes called nodes. Each one has a specific job. Some are used to load models, others to write prompts, generate images, and save your results. It's all visual, and everything's connected with lines that show how the information flows through the process. Once your setup is ready, just click the Queue Prompt or Run button at the bottom of the screen. This adds your request to the queue, and Comfy UI will start working on your image. If something goes wrong, you will see red outlines around the nodes that fail. It just happened to me. The error is checkpoint not found. And that's because I have not downloaded any model yet. So let's fix that. To get models, we're going to use a website called Civit AI. Head over there and click on the Models tab. I usually sort by most downloaded or highest rate. You're also going to find different formats but I highly recommend downloading models in the safe tensor format. It's safer and works really well with Comfy UI. Some of the most popular model versions you're going to hear are V1.5, which is great for fast, low resource generation, SDXL for higher quality and more detailed images, SD3, which is newer and more advanced. Let's also try searching for a really popular one called Juggernaut Excel. When you find it, look at the version label Lighting and then click the download button. The file is big, around six gigabytes, so it might take some time to download. If your browser prompts to select a folder for the download, go ahead and save the file in Comfy UI Models Checkpoints. That's where Comfy UI stores all your main models. Let's also grab a 1.5 model to test out. You have multiple filters in Civit AI, so let's filter by version, and this time we're going to download one like realistic vision or cyber realistic. These are great for portraits and everyday scenes. Once the model had been downloaded, move the files to Comfy UI's Models Checkpoint. Let's go back to Comfy UI. We're still not able to see any changes to the models. And that's because Comfy UI was already open when we downloaded the model. The fix is super simple. Just click the refresh button. That tells Comfy UI to check again. And now you should see your models listed. In this case, I see both the 1.5 and Excel versions. Okay, let's go ahead and select the Excel version. To make things clearer, I'm going to resize the node so we can read the model name 
You can do that by dragging one of the corners of the node. You can also move the node by clicking and holding on any of the gray areas and move it. Now, let's try generating an image using the default prompt. And look at that. The checkpoint node turns green. That's a good sign, but it doesn't stop there. Let's follow the flow along the nodes, and you will see that each one turns green. That means everything worked perfectly, and your image has been successfully generated. If any of the nodes turns red, it means something is wrong. Don't worry, we will talk more about how to fix errors later on. Okay, now we can see the results for the default prompt. Let's test the 1.5 version now to see if it also works. I will click Run again, and this time you will notice the flow runs faster through all the nodes. You can also look at the queue window on the left side to check how long it took. The first run usually takes a bit longer because the model is being loaded for the first time. But after that, things are a little bit faster. In the next tutorial, we're also going to learn in more detail about each node. But for now, let's have a quick overview of how this workflow works. We start by loading the model using the load checkpoint node. Then, we have two nodes to encode the prompt. The positive prompt, where you describe what you want, like glass bottle landscape, and the negative prompt, where you write things to avoid, like text or watermark. These are done using clip text encode prompt nodes. Those encode prompts are passed to the K sampler node, which controls stuff like a step, seed, and CFG, basically settings that affect how the image is created. Next, the image is decoded into a real image using the BAE decode node. And finally, it gets saved using the save image node. Now, each model works best with the specific settings, and most models give you recommendations for that. If we go back to the model page on CVT AI for our 1.5 model, if you scroll down and click show more, you will see extra details like recommended size, sampler, steps, CFG, and other settings. For example, this model suggests using 512 by 768 pixels. This is because the older 1.5 based models were trained on images of 512 by 512 pixels. You can push it a bit, maybe up to 768 pixels on one side, but if you go too far beyond that, you may get a strange result. Let's try these settings. Go to the empty latent image node, which is where we set the dimensions. Then set the width to 512 and the height to 768 for a portrait orientation and press OK. Now, let's update the sampler. The model page says to use DPM++ to M Caras. In Config UI, the name may look a bit different. We can find 2PM++ to M, but it doesn't say Caras here. This can be a bit confusing. In Config UI, Caras is not part of the sampler name. It's actually a scheduler. So, in the next field where it says the scheduler, we will change normal to Caras. It's essentially the same setting, just split into two drop downs. We also have some suggestions for settings of 30 steps and CFG of 5. So, let's also enter those. Now, for the fun part, let's try one of the sample prompts. Back on the model page, if you look at the sample images and click the eye icon on the image, you can see the exact prompts and settings used to create it. This is an amazing way to learn and test. I'm going to copy the positive prompts and paste it into my positive prompt field. Then I'm going to do the same for the negative prompt. If you need to adjust any other setting like the steps or CFG, do that now. One other difference is that they use a fit seed to get the exact image, but I'm going to leave mine in randomized to get something new each time that I run it. Time to press the run button again. And now look at that image. It turns out really nice. Let's try it a few more times to see the different results. And yes, each time is working really well. Okay, so now that we set up everything up and it's working nicely, we probably don't want to repeat this every single time. That's where saving your workflow comes in. Just click on save. Let's give the file a descriptive name, something like 1.5 image generation or the one that you prefer. With this, we had just saved the current workflow. You can even come back to this later or share it with your friends and it will automatically be saved under the Comfy UI user default workflow folder of your installation to keep things organized. Let's do the same steps, but now for your Excel model. On the model page for the Jordan Out Excel, click show more so we can see the recommended settings. Let's load the Excel model into Comfy UI. 
I usually prefer using Excel models over the older 1.5 ones just for the reason of the image size and quality. Now, let's update the sampler, steps, and CFG settings if needed. To get started, I'm going to copy the positive and negative prompts of one of the examples they have on the page to see what this model can do. Since the image size is four times bigger, it may take a bit longer to generate, but the result usually looks sharper and more detailed. Now that our SDXL workflow is working, let's save it as we don't want to lose any of our settings. This time, don't forget to click Save As and give it a name you will remember. With both workflows saved, we can now click the Clear option in Edit to get a blank canvas. Then you can press W on your keyboard or go to the Workflow tab in the left panel. We can instantly bring back any workflow we want. For example, I can download the 1.5 workflow and we can see that all my settings are back. Or I can switch over to the SDXL workflow. We can test it quickly and as you can see, it works perfectly. Now, something really important. Where are all these generated images saved? Just go to your Comfy UI folder. Then open the Output folder. Inside, you're going to find all the images you generated. Here's something super cool. The images include the workflow data inside them. That means if you drag one of the images back into Comfy UI, it will automatically load the exact workflow used to create it. That includes your prompts, settings, and all the notes. So if I drag an image made with the Excel model, it's going to bring back the correct setup. And you can also do that from the Q tab. Just drag the image back to the interface. Super handy to recover any used prompts. Now, let's talk about something really useful, the Comfy UI Manager. This is a little tool that makes installing new nodes and loading other people's workflow way easier. As we're using the Windows application, it is already installed, so we don't need to do any kind of installation for it. From here, you can manage your nodes and models and even restart Comfy UI. But the most useful feature is install missing custom nodes. When you load someone else's work and get those red error boxes, you can come here and it's going to list every single missing node you need with a handy install button right next to each one. As you have seen, Comfy UI is a visual interface that lets you build workflows using something called nodes. Each node does a specific task, like loading a model, processing an image, or saving your results. One of the biggest reasons people love Comfy UI is the flexibility. You can build your own workflows exactly how you want them. Every node is labeled, so it's easy to see what's going on at every step. And the best part, you don't need to write any code, just drag and drop and connect. You can also save your workflows, share them, or download ones created by other users. It's great for collaboration or learning, for example. Of course, it's not perfect. Some workflows you find online might look super complicated or be organized differently, which can be confusing at first. Also, if your computer is not really powerful, complex workflows may run a bit slow. But even with those downsides, Comfy UI is an amazing tool that gives you complete control over your image generation. Once you get the hang of it, it's fast, efficient, and honestly, a lot of fun. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to build a complete workflow from scratch. I'm also going to explain each node how to add them, connect them, and more options. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe button. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. And thank you for watching.